So today we're going to be replacing the uh, O-rings and oil seals in the vacuum pump. Now if you're like me, you know, with this one, uh, to start with, by the time I realized it was leaking, I had oil everywhere. So you may want to get a pressure washer and try to wash underneath of it or gunk the engine or you're just going to be an oily mess. Um, this is something that wears out. Uh, you know, I've rebuilt this. This is not the first time. Uh, this is an 01 Dodge uh, coming six speed. And I got 520 some thousand miles on it. And this will be the second time I did this. So they last, but they do wear out. Uh, so we're going to go over every part of it. Uh, where to get the kit, the best kit to get, and so on like that, how to get it out of there. But take a moment, if you look at my, my truck here, I got a lot of upgrades. I got compound turbos, I got an external wastegate, I got, uh, you know, water methanol on there, uh, intake manifold and modifications, got a lot of repair videos, upgrade videos, and so on for the Dodge Cummings. So take a moment and subscribe, and then we're going to get to it. I'm going to show you what we got to do. So it's actually up here underneath your steering box. Here's your steering box, and it's up in here. And what happens is the vacuum pump bolts up to the front of your gear cover, and it's gear driven off of the gears in the inside there. Now, behind it is the uh, power steering pump. So there's a shaft that goes straight through it and into the power steering pump. So there's actually two ways people will tell you to do this. There's two ways to do it. You know, I opt for the easier way. You can remove the whole thing, which involves taking your power steering lines out, and then you take it loose. There's two bolts in the front cover. Uh, you can see the one nut here, and then there's one up above it. And you take the whole assembly out and disassemble it from there. Now you have to drain the fluid and so on. The second way is to take the bolts out of the power steering pump. There's a bolt right here and there's four of those. You take those loose, you push the power steering pump back out of the way and then take the uh, vacuum pump off. Now the vacuum pump has a oil feed right here that you have to remove. So you remove that because it's actually what it does is that's why it'll leak so bad is it supplies oil pressure inside and keeps it oiled. So you remove that line and you get some oil drips out of it so you may want to put something underneath of it. And then you take the, uh, what I'm going to do is take the power steering pump loose away from it. And then I'm going to take the pump out itself. Like I say, there's two bolts, one top, one bottom. So we take the four bolts out of the power steering, take the two bolts out, take the oil line loose, and it should just come right out of there. So we're going to do that next, and after we get it out of there, I'll show you what we got, what's involved with rebuilding it. Okay, so there it is out. Uh, it was still oily mess, um, so I cleaned it up quite a bit. And you want to get it clean because you don't want any of that uh, dirty, oily get inside of it in the seals and all because that'll mess it up. One thing I didn't mention was if you're looking down in the top of the hood, this is sitting there somewhere in this area. There's a simple vacuum line that just pops off and you just pop that off. Uh, but you can see here, this is where your uh, you just have a square piece inside there and that's where your power steering pump bolts up and then there is the line there that's for your oil supply and like I say that's under pressure that's pumping oil inside here under pressure keep everything lubricated and then it drains out the front where the gear is and this gear is driven off of your uh, timing and the front gear assembly everything geared together so that doesn't matter where it goes but what we need to do is, there's a ring right here, if you look in the back of it. You need to mark that on the body so we, that's got to be put back in the same place. So after you get it all cleaned up, mark it. You know, sometimes I like to use white fingernail polish because the uh, fingernail polish doesn't dissolve in the grease. 
but you know you can take a little screwdriver scratch a mark or whatever you want to do make a mark and then we got two bolts one here one on the other side we take those two bolts out and we take this back part off of it um, so we're going to go ahead and do that next like I say try to get it clean you don't want everything go down going down inside there so uh, we're going to do that next and then we'll move on to see what we have to do after that Okay, so about the kit, uh, I got mine separated at any rate. You can see inside there how it works and what have you, um, how it looks. About the kit though, uh, if you Google the rebuild kits, you find them all over the place and they want about $30. And actually, what they're giving you is these three rings, that's all there is, and the gasket uh, where it bolts up to the back of your timing cover. Now. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna leave a link. Uh, these plastic pieces are obviously PVC that you could probably buy at any Home Depot. Um, you know, some of them even still have the uh, the pay scan things on them. But here's the thing: this kit costs about sixty dollars. And they actually give you another bag that they call spare parts. And it's got all the pieces in case you mess one up. Now, if you don't mess one up and you have to do it twice, like I'm actually on my second time, uh, you know, you can save this, save your spare parts, and all you need is the one gasket, okay, for your timing cover. And they also give you some grease because, you, you know, you need a little bit of grease on these uh, O-rings and stuff. And they gave you the PVC pieces. But it's up to you if you want to save yourself 30 bucks or so, you know, you can see if you can find the right PVC pieces yourself and, you know, don't mess it up. Now, first one I did, I didn't mess up any O rings, but I have no idea it was a long time ago what I did with the spare part. So I just bought another one. Um, but like I say, these are your parts. So what we got to do is first thing, we gotta, we're going to set this thing up on its end. And then we're going to take this PVC drive piece, and they give you real nice step-by-step -step instructions with it, too, uh, which the other ones don't. And we're going to tap that out. Now, you want to use a plastic hammer or a rubber hammer on here. You know, it's plastic, and if you use a regular hammer, it can shatter, uh, come off and hit you. And trust me, it can hurt, or it can go to your eye and do some damage. But, uh, so anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drive this down and we're going to knock that back seal. We're knocking this seal out and the back ring that we marked. Don't forget to mark it so you put it back in the same place. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll move on to what's next. So we knocked it out. Here's the piece to come out. You got this piece here and then you got this little crosshair thing that's obviously a drive. Um, but one O-ring is on here, and then you have your seal inside here, and I think more than likely the seal is what goes bad, but you have to replace, you know, you might as well replace the ring. And you see there's only three of them, so the other ring is going right here where you're bolting this thing back together. So it's not a hard job. I mean, we knock this out, like I say, with that PVC thing, it knocks right out. And then what we've got to do is we're going to turn it over, and we're going to take one of the other PVC pieces they gave us and set it in there. And we're going to knock out the seal. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we got our thing. And I use a liberal amount of grease. It helps it go together, too. Um, I probably should have mentioned, too, when you drive this in, you use a small piece, but you use the uh, bigger round in if it's in there. If the smaller one kind of goes inside, when you ever put a seal in, you want to tap on the outside of the seal, not the inside, because you'll mess it up. Um, but that's kind of the part that oh, I think they modified. The only one that you would have to modify if you want to buy the pieces yourself is typically a plug is uh, square headed and this one's round headed. So I think they just sanded it off till it was round. But anyway, then we're going to insert this back into our housing now you got make sure you put your little crosshair thing in there that just sits in there and uh, 
and put it back where you marked it so it goes back in the same way you took it out and we're going to just stand that up on end and then we're going to use our big tool here and drive it down now you don't you know it should go in relatively easy it shouldn't be that hard so if you notice it uh causing resistance you know check it if it cocks it'll wedge so try to keep it as straight as possible and just tap it in until it bottoms out okay and this is why you use a liberal amount of grease on there you don't want the uh, rubber part pushing off of there getting caught on the outside you can rub a little bit of grease inside too if you like but uh, yeah so we're gonna go ahead and do that next and then we'll move on to how to reassemble it okay so I got that piece drove back in and that as you can see that little crosshair piece that just sits, sits loose in there so what you got to do like some of the models have a pin on it mine's got a pin um, you know pretty much these stayed the same through years so you're gonna have the same setup uh, they didn't get changed much so I replaced my o-ring and I rubbed grease all around inside there and outside it looks like I went a little bit crazy with the grease but it helps it holds the o-ring in place and it helps with the sealing so when you put this back on the only thing you have to do is you have to stick your finger down inside and align the crosshair thing with this part and it doesn't really matter because what happens this has two prongs and that's four obviously so your uh, power steering pump is going in the other two prongs and that's how it drives the power steering pump so we're going to mount this back on and then we're going to bolt it back in the truck. Uh, it's not a hard job. It's a pretty easy job. Uh, anyway, that pretty much sums it up. And be sure to subscribe. Like I said in the beginning, you know, I got a lot of videos for Dodge, you know, rebuilding and doing things. I mean, save yourself a couple bucks, even $60. If you buy this pump, you know, they're not cheap. And if you take it somewhere, it's not even cheaper. It's probably going to cost you five, $600 to have somebody. Well, they're probably not going to want to rebuild it. They're going to want to replace it. So it probably might even cost more. So anyway, save yourself a couple bucks. Do it yourself. And you have a nice day. And thank you for watching.